Barack Obama was one of the most beloved presidents in the history of the United States, though there is no shortage of controversy surrounding him. But it is not his political career, impressive as it has been, that draws the most attention to this man. Instead, their inspiring life story makes him a particularly remarkable figure in American history. The Childhood of Obama There is no ignoring the elephant in the room. Race plays an integral part in the story of Obama. He is the first and so far only mixed race president in American history. His father, Barack Obama Sr., was a Kenyan international student at the University of Hawaii where he met Ann Dunham. She was a white woman from Kanasa who was studying at the university. The two had a child when she was only 18 years old. However, they divorced, and Barack Sr. returned to Kenya, where he would later day in a car accident. The young Obama did not think much of his multiracial heritage at first. He later remembered that my father looked nothing like the people around me, that he was black as pitch, my mother white as milk, barely registered in my mind. Coming to grips with a complex identity, Anne would later marry Lolo Satoro, another international student from Indonesia. So, at age six, Barack and his mother moved to Indonesia. The very international character of Obama's upbringing would play an essential role in his worldview. That period was critical to forming a unique identity. I was raised as an Indonesian child, and a Hawaiian child, and as a black child, and as a white child. And so I benefited from a multiplicity of cultures that fed me, he later said. While his mother was white, she was a hardcore liberal and encouraged Obama to embrace the black part of his heritage. Obama remembers that she told him, to be black was to be the beneficiary of a great inheritance, a special destiny, glorious burdens that only we were strong enough to bear. The youngster was known as Barry throughout those early years, traveling between Hawaii and Indonesia. But after an emotionally significant visit to Kenya, he asked everyone to call him Barack to honor the Kenyan part of his heritage, and that is what he has been called ever since. However, as he got older and understood the role of race and identity in the world better, Obama was increasingly burdened by his diverse and complex heritage. At that time, Hawaii had a tiny black population, making it difficult for Barack to understand all the nuances of his identity. As he explained, I was trying to raise myself to be a black man in America, and beyond the given of my appearance, no one around me seemed to know exactly what that meant. During these years, he used drugs and alcohol often, developing a particular affinity for marijuana. The crowd he ran with was essentially a group of stoners that called themselves the Chum Gang, a community organizer. In 1979, Obama received a scholarship to Occidental College in Los Angeles, where he began to engage in political activity. Most notably, the young student gave a speech opposing the evils of apartheid. He then attended Columbia University, where Barack graduated with a 3.7 GPA. But if you ask Obama, his most significant learning experience came after graduation on the mean streets of Southern Chicago. It allowed him to do good, but just as importantly, to understand the culture on the predominantly black South side of the city. His biographer David Mendel wrote that it provided the aspiring leader his first deep immersion into the African American community he had longed to both understand and belong to. His goal was to help improve the conditions in local housing, but that proved far more complex than he expected. Obama later recalled that this inspired him to study law because I just can't get things done here without a law degree. A rising legal mind. As you may have heard, Barack was accepted into Harvard Law School, a good place to get a law degree. He was an excellent student there and Obama was a natural leader. By persuading liberal and conservative students that he would give both a fair shake, the aspiring lawyer managed to get elected president of the Harvard Law Review. He was the first black person to win this position. It would not be the last time he trailblazed like that. He was making national waves and soon, Barack got a book contract from Random House. The resulting book, Dreams From My Father, A Story of Race and Inheritance, was a bestseller, focusing on the identity struggle that had dominated his life until then. With all the media attention the book received, it was just a matter of time before this rising star entered the political arena. Obama had more time to focus on that after graduating from Harvard in 1991 with a Juris Doctor Magna Cum Laude. But first, he practiced law in Chicago, where he fought against housing discrimination. Obama was also on the Woods Foundation of Chicago board, 
which focused on housing for the city's disadvantaged population. Meanwhile, Obama met Michelle Robinson, a brilliant lawyer who was his supervisor at Chicago's Sidley and Austin law firm when he interned there during law school. The two married and had children, Malia in 1998 and Sasha in 2001. A fast rising political star, Barack Obama's political career started on a somewhat unpleasant note. In 1996, Illinois Senator Alice Palmer decided to run for Congress, and she marked Obama as her successor. However, when the senator's national run did not go according to plan, she decided to run for state senator again and asked Barack to step down. He refused and challenged her registration, successfully keeping Palmer off the ballot. His career as a state legislator started roughly as Democrats resented what happened with Palmer and Republicans controlled the Senate. However, when his party won the majority, Barack Obama was involved in some critical legislation, including welfare reform and childcare subsidies. Barack's first foray into national politics was a bust. In 2000, he challenged local luminary and former Black Panther Bobby Rush in a primary for the House, but lost handily to his better known rival. After licking his wounds, Obama ran for the Senate in 2004. He took a gamble and opposed the Iraq War, which was still popular at the time. He said, I don't oppose war in all circumstances, and when I look out over this crowd today, I know there is no shortage of patriots or patriotism. What I do oppose is a dumb war. That ruffled many feathers, but also got the young state senator much attention. Luckily for him, popular sentiment soon turned against Operation Enduring Freedom, especially among Democrats. Barack had some great luck at this time. His rival for the Senate seat was Jack Ryan, who was beloved for giving up his career as an investor to teach underprivileged children in Chicago. However, a scandal derailed Ryan's campaign, and Obama won handily. Becoming the first black president. Obama was already well known nationally, but he became a superstar when picked to give the keynote address at the Democratic National Convention. There, he famously said, There is not a black America and a white America and Latino America and Asian America. There's the United States of America. Barack was heavily involved in legislation and committee assignments, but it wasn't long before he set his sights on the presidency. Many advised against it since Hillary Clinton was seen as the prohibitive favorite to win the Democratic nomination. But after leveraging a surprising win in the Iowa caucus into a juggernaut campaign, Hillary conceded the nomination on June 7, 2008. In many ways, the general election, where Obama ran against John McCain, was a more straightforward affair. The Republican candidate was hampered by his problematic choice of Sarah Palin as his vice presidential candidate. In addition, Obama ran an intelligent campaign based on the catchy motto of hope and change, which appealed to a country looking for hope after years of wars and the economic collapse of 2008. The inauguration of Obama is remembered as a historic event in American history. For a country with such a long and painful legacy of systemic racism, the rise of the first African-American president was seen as a turning point for the country. He told an ecstatic crowd that, what is required of us now is a new era of responsibility, a recognition on the part of every American, and those of us who manage the public's dollars will be held accountable. The Presidency of Barack Obama The legacy of Obama's two-term presidency is controversial. He faced Republican control through most of his presidency. Meanwhile, his rivals later destroyed or hollowed out his main achievements, the Affordable Care Act, and the Deferred Action on Childhood Arrivals. Legalizing same-sex marriage occurred on his watch and was one of the most significant changes to occur in America during this period. His most significant failures were in the field of foreign policy. Though he managed to secure a nuclear deal with Iran and the Paris Climate Change Agreement and assassinate Osama bin Laden, his inability to act decisively in Syria and Ukraine continues to reverberate globally today. Nonetheless, the country came out of what could have been an economic catastrophe with a lasting impact and was in relatively good shape. However, one cannot ignore the racial implications of his legacy. With an Afro-Indian woman currently running for president, it is hard to imagine Kamala Harris's candidacy without Obama blazing the trail for her. Barack reached the highest position possible and redefined what is possible for people of color in the United States of America. The post-presidency Obama has become a beloved public figure with a strong presence on social media 
and continued involvement in national politics. He makes documentaries for Netflix with his wife and has a podcast with Bruce Springsteen. Whenever there is a presidential election or primary, many look eagerly to see who he will endorse. At only 63 and in robust health, Obama will likely have one of the most extended post-presidential terms ever. Let's hope he uses it to make America better. He often has in the past.